Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. As this government's trolley of corruption, cronyism and Tory sleaze is spilling over from all sides with this extreme Brexit Tory government, as they bang into everything from all sides in the Brexit aisle, and Annalisa Dodds had asked the former Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, to come back to Parliament to set the record straight and explain why he made four referrals of companies, bodies, Tory donors, pub landlords or whoever else had the, the money to shove in his pocket or whatever. And they were fast-tracked and successfully won contracts where he has said he considered them credible offers. One of them was Excalibur Healthcare, which won £135.4 million in contracts. He also referred Nine United, which won a £80.7 million contract. And Monarch Acoustics, sounds like one of them bad boys, doesn't it? Which won a £28.8 million contract. He made a fourth referral of JD.com, China's biggest retailer, chaired by billionaire Richard Lau. Sorry if I butchered your name. I'm also sorry if you can hear the dryer behind me. <laughs> but while well, yesterday, our James O'Brien invited Joylan Moan of the Good Law Project to not only talk about our hapless Hat Mancock's, sorry, I mean our hapless Matt Hancock's VIP fast lane for PPE contracts, but also to talk about how at every turn the government, overspilling with Tory sleaze, have done their absolute level best to show a distinct lack of transparency in this matter. 10.33 is the time. Um, two and a half minutes of uh, context and then over to uh, one of the people whose organisation will be named in the coming clips. Uh, so, first of all, uh, the, the reveal. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Yesterday, the Right Honourable Member for West Suffolk intervened on me to, in his words, set the record straight over whether one of his constituents secured a contract from the government related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, wow. He said that claims of such a contract were, in his words, a fabrication pushed by the Labour Party and a load of nonsense. Yet today, the Good Law Project has published evidence indicating that a company called Alpha Laboratories won a contract worth over £40 million wow. from the Department for Health and Social Care in December 2020, and that this company appears to have subcontracted all of the manufacturing of goods to another company, Hinpac Limited, which appears to be run by the Right Honourable Member for West Suffolk's constituent. Ah. Madam Deputy Speaker, I wanted to seek your guidance as to whether the Right Honourable Member for West Suffolk should return to this House and himself set the record straight yeah. by withdrawing the comments he made in this place yesterday. Yeah. And here's the response. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And uh, I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady on the front bench opposite for giving me notice of her point of order, although she gave me so little notice I couldn't get here in time to listen to it myself. Uh, she did, however, provide you with a written copy of it, which I have read. And the point I would like to make in response, Madam Deputy Speaker, is that this point of order and the point made in it demonstrates very clearly that there was no contract between the firm being discussed and the department or the NHS. And of course, the Department of Health and the NHS does not have a say in subcontracting arrangements. And so what this has done is demonstrated, finally and for the record, that there was no such contract between my constituents and the department or the NHS. All of this has been looked at by the National Audit Office, who found all uh, to have been done in an orderly way. And finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, no matter how hard they look or how deep they dig, all that will be discovered is a lot of people working hard to save lives. That's what was going on. 10.36, heartstrings pulled. Now, I am not a professional ornithologist. I occasionally, among many other subjects, report upon the work of professional ornithologists. So, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, I am not qualified to tell you that it is incontrovertibly a duck. Luckily, Jolly and Mom is a qualified ornithologist, or at least he is an esteemed lawyer and uh, a Queen's Counsel, no less. He's also the top man at the Good Law Project, to which you just heard Annalise Dodds referring. Um, 
I'm tempted just to say over to you. So we take up the story. It's like one of those Who Done It podcasts, this, isn't it, Johnny? Um, we take up the story of Matt Hancock saying that they've done absolutely nothing wrong in response to your revelation that the name of his pub landlord's company had been redacted from the contract given to the company that was subcontracted to give the business to the pub landlord's company. Yeah, so let's just take this from the top. Um, Matt Hancock's publican uh, is a guy called Alex Bourne, and his company is called Hinpack. Uh, and uh, uh, what Annalise Dodds says is that Hinpack didn't get a contract. Uh, uh, Annalise Dodds says that Hinpack got a contract with the government, and Matt Hancock says that's wrong. Well, um, uh, uh, Matt Hancock, I think, is is wrong to deny that truth because if uh, the government gives a contract to person A and stipulates that the contract is to be subcontracted to person B, then government has given a contract to person B. And why that's why would they do here. that? Why would they not just give it directly to person B? And yeah. I'm possibly well, tempted... And, and that's, that's exactly the, the, the point, actually, because the only real difference between giving a contract to Alpha Laboratories, which is the company that the Department of Health actually contracted with and giving a contract to Alex Bourne's HINPAC is that government has to publish the name of the person to whom it gave the contract, Alpha Laboratories, but can redact, can blank out, can obscure from your knowledge and my knowledge the fact that it is required Alex Bourne's company to be obscured that it has required um, Alpha Laboratories to subcontract the manufacturing to Alex Bourne. So the only difference between contracting directly with HINPAC and contracting with HINPAC through stipulating Alpha Laboratories has to contract with HINPAC is obscurity. Matt Hancock's department gets to um, obscure from your knowledge and my knowledge the fact that it is given a contract to Matt Hancock's publican. And that's pretty disgraceful, really. How did you, if this is even a word, how did you unobscure this fact? <laughs> well, um, uh, if you look at uh, what government has published and published only after we sued them and won in the High Court, that's quite important. Let me pause. Let, let, let me pause you there because you're obviously a lot better versed in, in the, 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 the ducking and diving of the last few months than I am, or my listeners are. The only reason that the contract containing the redaction or the blacking out ended up in the public sphere is because you'd gone to court to get your hands on paperwork like that. That's right. So uh, the law is very clear. You have to publish stuff. There are very limited um, opportunities for you to blank out embarrassing bits. Government was very, very slow in publishing and was blanking out lots of embarrassing bits. We went to court to force them to speed up uh, and we won. And so they published a whole bunch of stuff that they would not otherwise have published or would not otherwise have published quickly. Um, uh, I don't recall whether this was one of those contracts, right. but um, what you can see if you look online is that Department of Health has said nothing to see here. We've given a contract to Alpha Laboratories uh, and Matt Hancock says there's no contract between the Department of Health and, uh, and my publican. But um, uh, we obtained uh, from someone I'm not at liberty to disclose. Okay a copy of the contract without the embarrassing bits blanked out and without the embarrassing bits blanked out what you can see is that alpha laboratories was uh uh, uh required to subcontract the manufacturing of the test tubes that were being sold for all the 40 million quid to matt hancock's publican so so what you've ended up with basically is a is a ruse uh, a device a stratagem to obscure the real supplier. The real supplier was Matt Hancock's publican. And that is really bad. It's bad that 40 million quid or the supply of vials went to a publican. That's bad. And what makes it worse is that you have contractual arrangements that look to have been designed to obscure who the real identity was of the real contracting party. Um, benefiting from more than £40 million pounds of public money. I should say that Robert Peston's also got hold of the, the original contract and before coming a Lord High Panjandrum of political journalism, he, he cut his teeth for, for 20 years in, in business journalism and he had some very uh, uh, coruscating comments 
uh, coruscating meaning sparkly, but of course also very critical comments um, on this precise issue on his television programme last night. I'll, I'll share those when I've finished with you, Jolian, because there, there are, I suppose... you never two, finish with me, James. Well, I mean, for now, obviously, I mean for now. Um, two things, really. I, I, I mean, if, if, I, if I was one of Scooby-Doo's assistants, and, and uh, I mean, it, you're the meddling kid here, I think, um, because it, how, the question, how could they have hoped to keep this quiet, or if what you are describing is completely accurate, because, I mean, they clearly have obscured information, but we can't know for sure what the motivation for doing it was. It is, I think, a recurring theme in your recent work, that they just never thought any of this would come out. Yeah, I mean, this is not the first um, uh, uh, occasion on which this has happened. So uh, there's another contract that I've talked about quite a lot, a £252 million contract with a company called Ianda. Originally, that contract was going to be entered into by um, the box fresh £100 company of a guy called Andrew Mills, who's an advisor to Liz Truss. Uh, now, uh, I think she's still trade secretary. Home, home secretary. Um, was certainly foreign secretary, secretary, foreign secretary, yeah. foreign secretary now, mm. um, and uh, she was an advisor to his, and so it might have been quite embarrassing um, for him to have won a two hundred and fifty million pound contract, and so that contract instead was entered into in a company with a company called Ianda, um, with which he had no public connection. He, Andrew Mills, Liz Truss's advisor, but we found on his LinkedIn that he was a consultant and um, we began to pull at that thread and what we uncovered uh, was that originally the contract was going to his company and then it was passed uh, uh, very late in the day to um, Ianda. So, but for us seeing that LinkedIn entry, we would never have known who the real contracting counterparty was, that it was um, somebody very closely connected to the government. So exactly the same story there as here. And my fear, indeed my belief, is that those are two examples of where we've managed to get to the real contracting counterparty, but there are many, many others. And that this stratagem that, uh, that is being pursued of uh, obscuring who is really um, feeding um, at the public trough is a very widely used stratagem, but we'll never get to find out because government does not like transparency. Uh, and the, um, I, I suppose, well, I'm interested in the, in the work that they're doing on judicial review, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll save that for our next conversation because the margins employed here, I'm told by my contributors who have more experience than you or I in the world of uh, manufacturing and supply, the margins are, are close to unbelievable on some of these contracts. The amount of money that we know made its way into the pockets and bank accounts of some of the people you've mentioned, none of whom I should stress are accused of criminality and all of whom insist that they've done absolutely nothing wrong. The margins are mind-boggling. Well, a really extraordinary feature of the VIP loan, one that hasn't really come out yet, is that um, government internal documents said that you could be paid 25% um, above the price that other people were being paid without quibble. Now, um, that information was quite widely held in government. It was on official government documents. And you would think that government um, uh, wouldn't tell people, mm. look, if you bid 125 <laughs> rather than 100, yes, you'll get a contract anyway. Yes. But, but, but it's perfectly straightforward to imagine that ministers or ministers' offices or special advisors would have told contracting counterparties who are politically favoured that if they offered products uh, for 100 million um, and made an, a sort of 10 or 20 percent profit margin instead for 125 million, they'd be treated in exactly the same way. And um, I uh, would not be remotely surprised if some of these politically connected um, VIP lane winners of vast public contracts had that information, put their contracts in at higher prices, won those contracts anyway, and got very, very fat um, exploiting 
the pandemic whilst tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people died. And I feel pretty sickened by that, frankly. Uh, and and uh, less importantly, while many suppliers with perhaps more experience and more obvious credentials in this field couldn't even get their phone calls returned. F final question, is, is there any... Uh, are you aware of any reasonable rationale for the original redaction? I mean, I mean the, 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 the circumstances in which it would make perfect sense for the company to which all of the business is being subcontracted not being mentioned in the contract with the country, company that's doing the subcontracting? None at all. As okay. I say, there is no real economic difference between giving it to Alpha Laboratories uh, and insisting that Hinpack make it and giving it to Hinpack. Uh, and, and um, what government has done is is used um, redactions as a way to mask its embarrassment at the cost of transparency, and I think that's very, very wrong indeed. And do we know whether Alpha Laboratories took a slice of the financial action before the subcontract was... Abused? We don't. OK. Uh, I mean, it would be pretty surprising if, if Alpha they Laboratories didn't. agreed to do it for nothing. Mm. Uh, but we don't know how okay. the 40 million quid was split. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Well, what a fantastic interview. Absolutely, absolutely fascinating. I'll keep this brief because it went on for long enough and you don't want to listen too much to my end dribbling. But anyway, if it smells like Tory Slees, looks like Tory Slees, this band of brigands, you know, the fish rots from the head up, from the head down, should I say. It's probably Tory Slees. <laughs> so... So there you go. But anyway, I shall leave the video here and um, I shall wish you a fantastic weekend. And uh, until the next time, I shall bid you farewell. See you Monday.